Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the third day of Parak. This is the third edition of Parak, and this is the first quiz for your day. A uh, fight of light, which is based on wings and voice. So this is your friendly quiz master, or rather, very sleepy quiz master for today. Uh, Akhand Singh from IIT Patna. Let's go through the rules. So this is an under 25 quiz. Uh, there are only 23 questions in the set. Each question carries one point. If there is a division in the questions, like there is X and Y, we will be giving 0.5, 0.5 points. Uh, each question will be either based on walls, fights, or wings, flights. A camera icon will appear on the top right of the question if the uh, question contains an image. You have to type your answers in the G form only. Do not type your answers in the chat. Or why would you do so? do that if you don't want to give the answers to this? Uh, you have to submit the G form within 90 seconds of the time given to you, and there will be no reason of the questions. So you have to answer as I go, go through them. Uh, any unfair means will lead to an immediate disqualification. Do not Google. Please maintain the integrity of the quiz. So we'll now begin with the first question of the quiz. So on the next slide, there is an engram of one word X. So X were used as a tactic for the first time in a ferocious battle, which is also known as the largest naval battle in the history, uh, which took place in the Pacific Ocean near Philippines. So the commander, while explaining this tactic, infamously said that I firmly believe that the, this is the only way to swing the war in favor, uh, in our favor, and uh, to resort to this, he needed about 300 blades, and uh, if he was given that, he will turn the tide of the war. However, the tide of the war was not turned. So this word was again uh, brought into popularity, as we will see on the engram again, but, uh, due to an album launched by an American rapper. So uh, in this question, you have to give me the term X and also the American rapper. So the engram is this. Uh, you can see it uh, getting a peak at about 1944-1945, and uh, then it again got a peak about in 2017-2018. So easy question where you have to just tell me what tactic was this uh, good hints are album from an american rapper 300 planes required the tide of war you will get the country from which as the tide of war was not turned by them and the word is for five seconds and mixed with a move question after the next question So the second question says, the 9-11 attackers referred to some of their uh, targets using elaborate code names. They called the Pentagon, the Faculty of Fine Arts, while North Tower, the world uh, of the North Tower, the world of WTC, was called the Faculty of Town Plan. The attacks themselves were referred to as the X. While uh, 19 terrorists were dubbed 19 certificates of private education, one of the root uh, I want X, right? So one of the root of uh, root Latin words of X. It has evolved from meaning six. Okay, Me, uh, the evolved form of that word means six. So now you have to give me the word X, which was the name of the proper planning. So you can guess the theme of this planning, right? Faculty of Fine Arts, Faculty of Time Plan, Town Planning. Then you have 19 certificates for private education. So you get what theme this is. And you have to think of the same thing and uh, think where the six come in and you will get it so i just want that word that will get you that will fetch your points so we'll wait for 10 seconds and then move to the next question Okay, so we are moving to the next question. So the three supercomputers in the world right now. I believe that is an error. Uh, so uh, we are talking about a supercomputer uh, which has been built by the US Air Force Research Laboratory, that is AFRL. So uh, what they have done there, they have used 1760 Xs. 
so these excess are generally not used in supercomputers these are uh, this is something special done by them so by doing this uh, they are 500 uh, they have got a power of 500 uh, tflops that is uh, turn and floating point, uh, point operations per second which is very high uh, so they have uh, by doing this they have made it the fastest interactive computer in the entire us defense department so another advantage of x based uh, supercomputer is that it is energy efficient so it consumes just 10 percent of the power uh, comparable of comparable supercomputers so a popular tweet about this somebody who was trolling this said that with that much raw power we could play about 6 million windows of gta 5 at the same time 6 million gta 5 games running on the same pc so what do you think x is many hints in the question you can crack it from there this is something not usually in super, uh, used in for making supercomputers something that is energy efficient something that will run 6 million windows of gta 5 at the same time We'll wait for five seconds and move for the next question. Cool. So this is an India Connect. Uh, Omar Sheikh, a terrorist whose biopic was played by Rajkumar Rao in Omar Rita, 2017 movie, is mostly famous for his connections with 2016, mostly infamous for his connection with connections with 2611 attack and Deep Oil Killing, which was in 2002. But he also spent some notorious time in India, where, uh, where he kidnapped American and British nationals and few murders due to which he was punished with life imprisonment in 1994 in Tihar Jail. Uh, but he was released later in 1999 and then he created Havoc in 2002 and other things too. Uh, but the question that I'm asking is why was he released from jail in 1999 as uh, he was given a life, in life imprisonment. So your hints for this question is uh, even if you have watched Omerta, it won't help you. So don't think about that. Uh, you have kidnapped, you have 1999, you have the theme of this quiz. This is fight and flight. Think in those ways and you'll get the answer. I just want two, two or one or two keywords for this. So we have five minutes for this, five seconds for this question. again kidnapped released later in 2099 escape his life imprisonment so on the next slide there is an image which which is uh, which is uh, a device that was used for a specific reason uh, it's called the x gun where x is what it fires at ferocious speeds of 640 kilometers per hour a regular feature of aircraft safety tests from 1940s up to the present day x guns are specialized compressed air cannons that you that used to test jet engines and winches to ensure they could stand up to redact to something that we are not giving you to something once airborne uh, this radar is very important test as in 2019 in the us us alone the, federal, uh, the FAA reported over 17,000 dashes uh, with 1,000 more reported and uh, unreported around the world. So identify X and what they are used for. I'll show you the image. So you can see some pressure containers over here and they shoot something from this place directly into the jet engines. So they are testing the jet engines if they could stand, withstand these. So you have air cannons that hurl something at 640 kilometers per hour into the jet engines and also at the windshields to ensure that they could stand this and this is a very common way of way of damage on the airplanes. So five, give it 10 seconds.
X gun, 640 km power, jet engines, windshields, airborne. Get it. So we are at the sixth question of the set. So the name X Express has uh, several meanings, but uh, in the popular culture, the definition of X is uh, is a strain of marijuana. Uh, due to which it aspi inspired a movie from 2008 starring Seth Rogen. Uh, uh, Virgin America chose to adopt this as its name as its first non stop flight from west coast to Hawaii. To give a distinct touch, they were given, uh, to give a distinct touch to this flight, they have given a ma mango colored tail. I could have given you yellow colored tail when giving you mango colored tail because this is a hint. So, think in the similar line. I'll show you the image. Is to not use lens. Lens, and this is the Hawaii Express. The tail part here, something has been hidden, and uh, hence this is the this has been named X Express. X is also some strain of Mariana. The same X Express movie uh, name as the you know, Seth Rogen movie from 2008. It is kind of popular and Virgin America chose to name this to the non-stop flights which went for Hawaii for a reason. So we will wait for 5 seconds till and then moves to the next question. Okay, so X Express, Strain of Marijuana, proper 2008 Satoshi movie. Uh, Virgin America named it to the flight that went to Hawaii and Mango Color Tea and it fires. Cool. So there is a very weird site on the internet that's, uh, that said that uh, something which, are, which is a two worded name, X and Y, was a hot air balloon. So, where Y literally means measuring out or traversing in English. So, X and Y are not in English. So, though the image added for reference in the site is a Montgolfer Brothers balloon. This is the first hot air balloon flight, uh, which is very unrelated from this aircraft. But uh, they wanted to prove this. With a, so, that is why they used this. To prove his claim, he, uh, he references to several other incidents in history. According to Zoroastrian history, the Kayanian king Kai Khosru also travelled in a, a aerial vehicle which he also claims as a hot air balloon from Iran to China. In ancient Greek history, uh, somebody also used a fly, uh, flying ram that is that also he considers as an air balloon sent by Nephilim, the natural magic. So you have to identify X and Y. This is not a very direct question. You will have to think uh, Okay, I will show you the image. So X Y of dash dash error. Uh, you have you are giving the timeline 5677 to 5577 BC was a hot air balloon. So this image is from the first flight of a, a first flight of a hot air balloon. This is not connected with the answer, but to claim that this is correct, the website uses this image. You will get your answers that two words where Y means measuring out or traversing. Uh, y has been used for a lot. The, y is still used for uh, flights and other things. After you get Y, you can easily get X. You will get the answer mostly from the last paragraph. This is some micro reference. Okay, we will move to the next question. Question of 8. Hadrian's Wall is a former defensive fortification of Roman province of Britannia. Uh, it began in uh, AD 9, uh, 122 in the reign of Emperor Hadrian. Uh, running from walls and uh, on the river uh, Tyne to the in the east of Bonesau, Solway. 
uh, in the west. A fort is now northern England. This wall was built to keep the barbaric and savage tribes out. So focus on barbaric and savage tribes. This wall uh, at the edge of Roman Empire uh, was 73 miles long and around 20 feet tall at its highest point. It inspired the creation of similar thing, although much longer, about 300 miles and taller, made of something quite different. Uh, this is not as the wall was made, it was made of something different. Uh, when the latter's creator saw it on visit to the place, identify what it inspired. So this is uh, this wall uh, in the context we are asking you the question. It is still used for keeping the barbaric and savage, I'll not call them tribes, but uh, away from this. Uh, this wall is not made from stones. This is made for something else. And uh, okay, edge of Roman Empire can give hints too. We'll move to the next question now. Okay, so this is a long question. So the Punic Wars, also called the Carthaginian Wars, was a series of three wars between Roman Republic and Punic Empire, resulting in the complete destruction of Carthage, the enslavement of its population, Roman hegemony over the Western Mediterranean. However, uh, this crushing outcome might be misleading. Rome wasn't perfect in Punic Wars. Punic Wars. They suffered some of the heaviest defeats in history and were routinely evisceated by the Carthage on, on the seas. The eventual dominant victory was rooted in their incredible tenacity. Every defeat only seemed to fire them up further to cause them to take risk and pour the further resources nobody else would even think of doing. Historians have extensively, uh, extensively analyzed this behavior. One of, one of the proposed uh, explanations for this was something related to something of the structure of the Roman Republic. This unique progressive structure meant to prevent coups by the individual is thought to have uh, to have been one of the reasons for, for the further Romans daredevilry as Romans are sp very obsessed with glory and legacy. What was the structural fe uh, feature? Why did it cause the Romans to repeatedly take such risk in, spot, uh, in such a short span of time? So this is some feature in the uh, Roman Republic uh, due to which People went on wars again and again, even though they were losing a lot of resources and other stuff. So this 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 feature was brought in into the republic so that coups could be prevented and as as a progressive structure. This is still used in many places. Think of glory and legacy, think of progressive structure and you will get your answer. Think of why would they do it again and again in a short, uh, in a short span of time. So we will move to the next question. So there is an image on the next page uh, which is from an article and it is considered to be the origin of a very popular idea which was initially used to explain uh, a meteorological phenomena. It is now, however, popularly quoted to indicate this particular idea in a uh, wide variety of contexts. Identify the title of the article, which is also the name of this idea. So I hope you can read it, though I will read it out for you. There's the flap of a dash wings in Brazil set of tornado in Texas. Lest I appear frivolous and even posing the title question, let alone suggesting it might have affirmative answers. Let me try to place in proper perspective by offering two propositions. I will not read at all. I will read the most important points. In a single flap of dash wings uh, can be instrumentable, uh, can be instrumental in generating a tornado. So, and also if the flap of a dash wings can be instrumental in generating a tornado, it can equally in, equal, equally be instrumental in preventing a tornado. So these flaps can cancel them out. So hence 
what what are these flaps of and uh, what idea did they give rise to get to the article again so something you can you can guess it something vague is happening here so this gave rise to some term in in popular media some idea so when you get the title of the uh, of this document you get the effect what you are talking about cool moving to the next question uh, x was a set of computers used by british to help the uh, help in the cryptic uh, help, to help in the cryptography of ciphers uh, it had two different models one and two which were designed by that are uh, de designated by the term y although y has been used as a placeholder for version slash model in other instances too this is one of the most uh, famous such real world example why has also gained worldwide popularity in a pop culture context uh, for its use in this way and for x and y so uh, why is uh, why is used as a placeholder for version or model right so you can get it from the why is x X kile there are not a lot of hints. You would have to know uh, what is what was a what is the computer's name that was used for cryptographic analysis of ciphers. But cracking uh, Y is very easy. Let's save for ten seconds on this question. Okay, for X, you can think that uh, the computers at that time used to be big. They were large, so anything for similar word. Okay, we'll move to the next question. So, twelfth question: During the continuation war, when the Finnish army recaptured a city from the Soviets, they were in surprise for what they uh, when they realized that uh, Soviets had set up certain traps for them. In order to combat it, they came up with a very ingenious idea. So, they played a song very fast and uh, kept it going for continuously throughout the city uh, in every possible vital frequency for over six months. After which, it deemed safe to turn off the song and proper equipment was brought. Brought in to completely get rid of the threat. So, a Finnish army recaptured a city. They went in, and Soviets had put trap for them. So, to swear this uh, trap, they what they did was that they played a fast song, and they kept it going continuously, in all frequencies possible. So you can think what kind of trap it would have been, and how did they get away from this by using this. But uh, after six months, they didn't have to use it. So something happened with those traps that uh, now they could have now they, they can be removed from that place by using the proper equipment. So what was the trap setup, and why was it deemed safe to remove uh, remove it after six months? This can be cracked by using the bold terms itself. So they play it a fast song at every possible vital frequency. And then these could be removed after six months. Okay, so we'll move to the next question. So we are on the thirteenth question. And after this, we have 10 more questions left. 
having almost complete monopoly over the production of this metal during World War One, Germany extensively used the, uh, this in their munitions, such as flares and uh, tracers. By uh, World War II, the planes flew faster and farther and carried payloads larger than any military, uh, military experts predicted uh, possible due to lighter planes. One of the reasons contributing to this lightness was the use of large percentage of this particular metal. In an effort to make USA self-reliant in this production of war efforts, Dow pioneered its extraction through seawater. Identify what material we are talking about. This material was used for players and tracers. This, this material is light so it can be used in lighter planes. Also this is something that you would have run in your elementary chemi chemistry, chemistry classes. So Dow, you can get Dow. You, if you remember something from Dow, seawater, something that is light, give me the metal. So wait for five more seconds on this question. We move to the next question. So question number fourteen. William the Conqueror conquered England in the uh, one o six six. Uh, defeating King Harold at the Battle of Hastings and uh, marking the beginning of the end of Anglo-Saxon England. This seismic victory was, uh, was a pivotal moment in English history, the effects of, of which can be still observed today far away from the battlefield. Following his victory, uh, William began handing out the lands previously belonging to English aristocrats to his Norman French allies. Uh, in the castles built on the new land by these Norman French aristocrats, the cooks, though they were Norman French, while keeping uh, the kitchen helpers as Anglo-Saxon because they were already there. So they knew the surrounding areas and all coding structures over there. This led to something happening in cuisine and the menu at that time, which can still be seen to date. And this is big. You have, you have seen this. Everybody has seen this. And I believe might have questioned in their mind too. So what is this effect that we are talking about? So cooks remained Norman French while the kitchens, kitchen helpers were Anglo-Saxon only. The first part of the question is just the building up of this. You will get the answer from the uh, last of the two paragraphs. Cooks were Norman French. Kitchen helpers were Anglo Saxon, due to which something happened and is still very viable in all of the menus all over the world. What are we talking about? Okay, so we'll move to the next question in five seconds. Then we'll go to the next question. Question number 15. So in this question, the blanks are indicative. For people who don't know blanks are indicative, the answer is the number of the answer is uh, has equal number of letters to the number of blanks. As in this answer will have four letters. So dash 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 dash, a very popular American bra uh, brand introduced meat product of the same name. Uh, this was uh, easily prepared ex inexpensive food that lent itself to a baking and frying and more than 100 million pounds of it was uh, consumed by soldiers during World War II meal. Upon meal, we are, till they were tired of it. Uh, this word lent itself to the internet following up, a very popular skit in which every dish in restaurant, uh, in restaurant contains this, what we are talking about, uh, whether the di uh, diner wishes to have it or not. Identify dash. This also gave rise to something very popular. So you get it from a popular American brand. People are tired of it. You get it even, even if you don't want it. What brand is this? Polated brand. We'll wait for five seconds on this question and then move to the next question.
So you're going for the next question. So you're on the question number 16. Talking about his unusual action in this scene, X said it was just something that came to me after a while everything starts getting sore because it has a lot of repetitive motion. The connective tendons in my biceps were getting sore and I had to warm them up before throwing punches. I had to literally do that, uh, does some action to warm them up. Uh, this said action uh, this said action ended up becoming a very iconic part of this fight scene. Uh, while the franchise this scene, this scene was part of is most known for large scale stunts, this fight sequence remains one of the modern day masterpieces of close quarter fighting. Identify X and also give the name of the movie the sequence was part of. So biceps getting sore and he does something to warm them up that has that is in that scene uh, the franchise is known for a large scale for its large scale stunts something recent and fight sequence remains one of the best modern day masterpieces of close quarter fighting identify the the person who is talk who we are talking about and also the movie we'll go to the next question in five seconds So question number 16, uh, question number 17, sorry. Uh, a year ago, a British engineer and physicist claimed that he had solved one of the greatest mysteries of our times, providing hope to closure of hundreds of families and pleaded the governments for few nations to take the action. His claim was that any give, at any given time, there are hundreds of amateur radio enthusiasts beaming messages back and forth across the skies by tracking the flow of disturbances in these signals, signal crests crossing the globe. He, uh, he was able to accurately arrive at a conclusion. He further said that errors in this estimate are unlikely considering how the only possible disturbance that could be caused in signals would be spaced an hour apart. Uh, considering there was no other entity in the vicinity that could cause any such disturbance. Identify the entity. So you'll simply get the answer from one of the greatest mysteries of our times. Something that many families are thinking to know about. Also governments of few nations should give, take action for it. Not only one nation would be required. Uh, Also, do not forget the theme of the quiz, it's fight and flight. Moving to the next question in five seconds. Okay, question number 18. The Battle of X took place in, at the village of X in England uh, on 25th September 1066 between English army under the King Harald Godwinson and Norwegian army led by King Harald Hardrad and the King uh, and the English king's brother uh, Tostig Godwinson. After a bloody battle, Hardrad and Tostig along with most of the Norwegians were killed. Uh, this landmark battle has traditionally been presented as making as marking the end of the Viking Age. Sports fan would uh, would also be familiar with X, although in an entirely different context in an entirely different place. Uh, hosting battles of different kind, X has been home to most voluminous and reckless spending uh, in uh, sports history in recent time. Identify X. So first part is just for the story. You'll get your answer from me. The second part. So after a bloody battle, uh, both the people that went to war were, were killed.
think Harold will do a game out victorious. Delay for five more seconds and move to the next question. Okay, so question number 19. Abe traveled to the New York City in uh, late 1770s and early 1780s uh, every few weeks to gather information. Uh, his married sister, uh, Mary, lived there and gave him a valid reason to visit. Uh, on obtaining any value, uh, valuable information, he returned home to Long Island to pass it to Caleb. Anna, a friend in, uh, and a neighbor to Abe, helped Help passing the messages by posting prepared uh, pre-arranged signals to indicate when when was re uh, ready to pass information. If she hung a black petticoat on a clothesline, it meant Caleb uh, had arrived in the town in his whale boat. Also, she would hang out the quantity of handkerchiefs to indicate which of the six neighboring cave coves uh, he was in. Caleb uh, then passed along the messages to Benjamin who was in direct contact with X. So you have New York City, you have a place, you have timeline, somebody very important from that timeline uh, and whatever this is talked about, you might have got idea of what it is. I don't want a proper noun, if you give a common noun it works and for X I need a proper noun. X is easily crackable. We'll wait for five more seconds and move to the next question. Okay, so you have an image on the next page. So uh, these are a type of fencing mostly com most commonly seen around London. These string fences, uh, however, once served uh, a very different purpose. They were used uh, as X during Y. Mass production for civilian uh, population of London at the time, uh, they were mass produced for these uh, civilians. Uh, these were part of the emergency equipment used by officers during Y. So, as much of the original fencing in London had been used for its metal in the wall uh, effect, the remaining X were used as fences in this set. Identify X and Y. So, the image is this and uh, from the image you can guess what these are, it is a direct thing and uh, something related to wars, but getting back to the question, so uh, Y is uh, something that happened and uh, X are these. So you have to tell us uh, what purpose do these fences serve and at what time they were brought in there. So we'll move to the next question in the next five seconds. I'll show you the image again. Focus on these portions and what could have these used as. moving to the next question so the siege of constantinople in 718-80 is one of the most powerful fights in history having seen their power diminish the eastern roman byzantine empire faced destruction as forces of uh, caliphate sailed on their capital city a successful assault would likely have meant the end of roman line legendary for their res resistance the romans held firm Amidst caliphate's onslaught from the seas, 
and they had an ace up their sleeve and a alchemical marvel that made engineers room made by the engineers room uh, something has been redacted a weapon so destructive that its discovery was as archived ascribed as divine intervention uh, short from the mechanical catapults it was it wreaked havoc on arab fleet as the caliphate re relented what famous sequence in the world of media heavily reference have has heavily references from this battle so the caliphate sailed on the capital city and they used some kind of uh, mechanical catapults and an alchemical marvel made by the romanians and they wreaked havoc on the arab fleet So moving to the penultimate question in five seconds. So the penultimate question of the quiz: the combat, uh, this uh, to combat the stalemate of trench uh, warfare on the Western Front of World War One, the Germans began experimenting with the new battle tactics. One of their first solutions was the creation of inf of an infiltration units. the soldiers of which are called xs the primary role for these xs was to cross the no man's land rapidly and quickly overwhelm the enemies thus breaking the deadlock these tactics demanded the independence and resourcefulness as speed and accuracy uh, resourcefulness as speed and accuracy in chaotic close quarter fighting was imperative for success however most of us know the word x for a very different reason also uh, this x that we know is also a name of group of soldiers but these famous more famous x however are absolute opposite of the uh, excellent names x uh, this means if uh, the original x is were uh, matlab were known for their speed and accuracy these are not known for their speed and accuracy these are rather known for slow being slow and very less accurate so what are we talking about I'll wait for five more seconds on this question, and then next move to the next question. Okay, so we're moving to the ultimate question of the quiz. So, uh. This satirical poster was sort of circulated in 1946. Uh, age is important for this question. Deals in a uh, deals in an ironic, critical way with the problematic results of dash, uh, and these dashes are not indicative. Uh, programs uh, program undertaken by the Allied forces in uh, post World War II Germany to cleanse it. Uh, the image depicts black sheep emerging as white sheep after being passed through a machine with the same name as that of the program and the banner at the left reads there will be more joy uh, over one sinner who repents than 10 uh, righteous persons and for the name of the machine i will be showing you the poster so i hope you are able to see the poster a friend of mine so that you people aren't able to google it a friend of mine has done a lot of artwork on it so you can see that there are black sheep that are going into the machine and then and then they are coming out white going back to the question as image depicts black sheep emerging as white sheep and this is post germany post world war 2 germany uh, and the allied forces are trying to clean something and you have to identify the name of the machine 1946 Cleansing something from World War Two Germany, and uh, its name is also written as as shown on the question. Its name is also written on the machine. 
we can try fixing it from that. We'll move to the next question in the next five seconds. Finally, so 1946, post World War II Germany, cleansing something. Black sheep goes in and comes out white. Uh, there will be more joy over one sinner who repents than ten righteous people. Uh, and find the name of the machine. So uh, we'll go for go for the answers in the next session. Uh, thank you for attending. We have two more quizzes today. Uh, we have been cubed today. That is a uh, brisk quiz. So do join us there. And thank you.